friends. It's true, you know. Personal, local, global wellness. You may now begin the course. The emotional response to love. It's awfully important. Is usually the result of a Columbia family. A show of affection. Redefining what health means for you. And the real fundamental you, you, you. Well, if you'd like a place where there's never a dull moment, choose the right flavor of wellness for you. Syndacy Wellness hosts the personal, local, global wellness show. Welcome to the Personal Local Global Wellness Show, hosted by Syndacy Wellness. My name is June Syndacy. I am a wellness and healthcare practitioner at Syndacy Wellness. I help women go from emotional overwhelm and anxiety to a state of ease, grace, and comfort in their nervous systems through nutrition, mindfulness, and psychological therapies. Today, we have the incredible Banya Lim with us, um, an amazing multi-generational oriental medicine practitioner. She's going to be speaking to us about easy things we can do to take care of ourselves at home to boost our immunities and mindset. Um, and keep our spirits high during this intense time of the pandemic. Thank you, Banya, for being here. Thank you for the six people who are already tuning in. Um, and I'm going to let Banya tell us a bit more about herself and her history into what got her doing and what she's doing today. Well, as you say, I, uh, I'm an oriental medicine practitioner. I, I grew up in a family that practiced oriental medicine. Literally, I had herbs all around me, sometimes even acupuncture needles that I see everywhere. And first time I did acupuncture was when I was seven years old, huh. on license. But on my mom, she told me to do it. <laughs> um, so this is very ingrained in me and who I am, what... Uh, Orient, what oriental medicine is and um, how that can be applied in every aspect of our lives. And not only that it has a long history, I mean, the written history goes, goes back to about 2005 years and there's some even paintings in the caves of Meridian men. So definitely more than 5,000 years old medicine. We call it alternative medicine, but it was the main medicine in Asia. For thousands of years. Um, yes, and that's what I do. And it kind of evolved into a more uh, spiritual aspect of Oriental medicine, which is actually uh, how it started, how it has been practiced hundreds of years ago. It was a form of um, um, awakening and evolution as a human being on a spiritual level and this has been used to open that up within us because our body is intricately connected to energetic aspect and the spiritual aspect of who we are unless we uh, create a balance and centeredness within the body it would be very difficult to create balance in the energetical and spiritual aspect of who we are and it's intricately connected actually it's just it's one so by opening um literally opening the blockages in the meridian it helps us to open up our energy aspect and then eventually open up our spiritual aspect of who we are I love this. And it has been used for centuries, thousands of years, and people have healed from miraculous diseases, autoimmune cancers, things they never thought they could overcome when they take a more holistic and interdisciplinary approach. If you don't mind, would you break down what the meridian system is for dummies? If people haven't been introduced to um, oriental medicine or acupuncture or any of these traditions or medicine <laughs> therapies. Yeah. And I think this is the main reason. This has a main reason that has been difficult to create a, a hypothesis and to testing it in a scientific Western scientific setting because science is all about whatever you see. You have to see it. But the meridian system that I'm talking about is actually invisible to the eyes. But recently, I found that the United Air Force. Uh, did 
test to uh, infrared light uh, testing to see uh, where the people pain is, but they accidentally found the meridian system. They found the whole this this uh, lines light up within the body when they infuse the infra infrared light, and it so happened that one of the doctors who were involved with the studies did um, two weekend course on you know acupuncture class and found that that looks like meridian system. So when they actually did the study, that it was exactly following exactly channels and pathway of the meridian system. So there are some studies out there uh, shows not only existence of the meridian system, but that how it functions, how it operates. But when you, you know, when you look at body or cadaver or you can see the blood vessel, you can see the muscle, you can see the tendons and so on. But meridian system, you cannot see with your eyes, but you can feel it. You can feel it. And one of the best way that I can describe it is since meridians are connected to organ, so we call each meridian, lung meridian, large intestine meridian, spleen meridian, kidney meridians. And each organ also has an intricate connection to specific emotion. Okay. When you have this very strong um, elevated emotion, it could be fear, sadness, whatever that might be, your meridian uh, reacts right away. And if, if it goes on long enough, it ends up creating blockages in the meridian. One good example is the kidneys and bladder is a yin and yang pair. And the bladder meridian runs in, from the eye and goes backside and next to the spine goes down the spine. And kidneys and bladders, emotion is fear. So when someone experiences extreme fear, we sometimes jokingly say that I have a chill going down, going down the spine. It's not just the phrase. It's not just uh, people saying. You literally feel the energy on the spine and down the spine. And when you have, when you go through that long enough, actually start creating blockages in the channel. If you're in a fight or flight, stressful situation, mindset, or I guess lifestyle where you're always in the sympathetic nervous system mode, mm -hmm. I think a lot of us are experiencing that in today's world where we are so reactive. And I, and I always talk about picking up my phone first thing in the morning and then choosing to take time before touching my phone or touching anything that's going to put me in a reactive mode and the color mm -hmm. red is a color they've worked with behavioral scientists to look at it being the exact color red that stimulates our sympathetic fight or flight response the most. And that in today's time, we are in that mode so much more than our physiology. I think our biology has been designed to be because before mm -hmm. it was only when a tiger was chasing us that we had to have that much cortisol production or really ramp our system up in such a way. But now our entire kind of world is is stimulating us in such a reactive way. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how people do not believe in energy anymore when we take our Bluetooth for granted, our Wi-Fi for granted, all of these things that are totally invisible. Yes. Yes. And the oldest forms of medicine are oriental medicine. In the karate kid, you see Jackie <laughs> Chan doing all this cool stuff to get the kid to fight the last um fight when he gets injured and with the meridian system i'd seen like white figures with lines on them mm -hmm. which was showing the meridian system like in a chiropractor's office or an oriental medicine office and so can you speak to us about how acupressure and acupuncture ties into the energy systems and how that relieves stress i know businessmen that paid thousands of dollars going to the top kind of institutions for psychology, for stress relief, stress management, because of how much responsibility and power they had. And they could never find a remedy until they tried acupressure and acupuncture to release all the pent up stuck energy in their body of the burdens they were carrying um, with the amount of pressure and the 
the responsibility they'd chosen to take on for their families and communities. So it's something that anyone's socioeconomic status, anyone's culture or body system, I've really seen benefit from. Yes. Wow. I mean, we, the reason that I address about the, the fear and how the people feel that in the back and saying, you know, having chill going down the spine, it all co- kind of co- related to how important it is for us to pay attention and also listen to our bodies because our bodies are the most I believe most honest things that we have because our bodies react to whatever we put into, no matter how much you're trying to hide it, no matter how much you're trying to be not being uh, shy, your face turn red. And no matter how much you try to hide that you're, you're fearful, you, you have a clammy hands, you have your body reacts to whatever emotion that you put into that you, whatever emotion you're going through. So, so by being able to pay attention and being mindful of your body, what body your body is saying to you, to you, which is culturally, I believe it is a very important thing that we have to learn as a, as as a, as a children. When you start to pay attention to, not as like just describing, I have a chill going down the spine, but it means something. And also understanding a deeper level why that's happening. And when you, quiet yourself to listen and know that, oh, I am having a fear and I have a, this fearful react, reaction to this event or this person, this relationship, whatever that might be, then you can go on a much deeper level. But acupuncture, the meridian system, meridian is basically acupuncture points that uh, energy is running and there's a specific point says like an energy spot that you can go in to open up on the body of the body on the body and by diagnosing properly and knowing which points to open up you can actually open the whole whole channel and it doesn't require many needles if you know exactly how the meridian energy is moving and how this meridian has been blocked, this is a reason why I'm not only checking the pulse, but really trying to understand the story behind why people are coming to me. And that is very, very important. Um, when you get to have that whole picture, then you, those points will come to you. And, and it only requires it's just few points most of the time. And with the right number and right sequence, you can be able to open up the channel. But also, you can be reversed that way too. So sometimes uh, some martial arts in the ancient time used it as a, um, attacking combating points because once you understand how the energy flows within your body you can also do it in a reverse way as well which is something that also i need to know and also i have learned as a um, martial artist as well and of course i I would never use those points but having the knowledge is important (laughs) how to really optimally allow the energy to run and i bet and i love that what we're talking about around the body doesn't lie and fear manifests in different ways and then it gets stagnant and then we have these symptoms of i excessively pulled my hair people get depressed or people don't know how to process emotions in a healthy way they don't know how to optimally use their energy to begin with Mm -hmm. or circulate their energy and we are an energy system the doctor asks how is your energy levels you know are you tired do you have too much energy and I think what I'd love to chat about as we go into Banya is very humble people from around the world famous uh, I could say even kings and queens high status people come and visit her and today she's going to be giving for free information to all of us listening how to really manage our systems and just easy things we can do during the coronavirus but just taking a couple years or steps back of our body doesn't lie but at an early age what I did, and I know so many people do, is we learn to ignore our body signals 
and we learn to ignore our bodies, which Mm -hmm. is our greatest gift. And some people know on here that I fell 25 feet and broke my entire body a year and a half ago, my back included. And I had to really learn to honor my body so that I could continue living. And I wasn't so dissociative out of my head, you know, out of my body that I would fall. Banya helped me when I'd broken ankle once. And I think this COVID epidemic is making us more now than ever aware of our fear and aware of our limitations and aware of our fragility and our health. And I would love for you even just to speak for a moment on why we learn to ignore our bodies as children and why we are almost scared into our heads Mm -hmm. in a petty society of Mm -hmm. logically figuring everything out when we know scientifically that we are a whole system of Mm -hmm. um, mind, body, spirit. Now we can prove that. Mm -hmm. And how people ignore their bodies and then when they start to have to pay attention to their bodies, Mm -hmm. they're still in fear. And to really reframe that, perspective i think you well as far as that subject i can talk forever on um i believe it's because we gave our authority ultimately even our sovereignty to outside of us since very young whenever kids uh, you know gets upset or re- you know reactive we never said like just quiet yourself and listen to your body Listen to what you're saying. It's never about that. Like, listen to your parents, listen to your teacher, listen to something outside of us. And we have taught to give authority and not being able to trust what we are feeling and what we are sensing. You know, up to age of six or seven years old, children do not remember things as words or um um, they don't describe things with the word, but they remember as a feeling. And this is how we are actually designed as a human being. We, de- we are designed to sense things and understanding things, having connection to, to things based on what we are sensing, what we are feeling. But it has been um, desensitized over the over the years. And I can talk to you about how culture has been influenced, that I, even including even some religions also influencing our belief on not trusting and not honoring what we are sensing. And there's science now proving that we get more internal signals than we do external signals. But we weren't taught to value our internal signals when at the end of the day, we're the one who has to calm ourselves to be able to sleep. And I know so many mothers cleaning the house until 2 or 3 a.m. because they can't turn their minds off. Mm -hmm. And I bet a lot of people, I'm in a lot of different women's group and, you know, groups and the girls are like, I just am adding way too much sugar to my oatmeal in the morning. And I I keep opening the refrigerator, but that is not going to solve the issues I have going on inside. I just don't have the tools to learn how to process my emotions in a healthy way. And I think the, the wellness industry and people who've been doing this work on themselves because of trauma, because of not feeling like they fit in because they were too sensitive, these skills and the gifts that you have and multi-generationally has come through you are needed more now than ever because people are willing to learn how to manage their fear and kind of confront how to regulate their nervous system now more than ever to be able to if they want to get another job, if they've been let off, calm themselves down enough to write the application or to sit in front of someone virtually and say, I deserve this job, you know? And I think a lot of people are, are really coming up against a lot of things that they could distract themselves by going to the bar every Friday night or getting on their phone or, you know, really distracting themselves with the external authority and approval. And Mm -hmm. instead of having to sit in a house alone and, Mm -hmm. and, really face Mm -hmm. a lot of things, which is what I think the gift of the coronavirus is. But a lot of people don't have the tools or the roadmap of how to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm excited that you're talking about your practice, uh, your, your, your counseling practice, your oriental medicine practice of the many, the many ways you help people, you know, start on that journey and then continue on their own and, um, all the tools in your, your tool kit. 
<laughs> around it because it's very, very poignant at this time. Um, so I don't know if you want to speak any more to that or if you want to jump into um, just basic things people can do for the coronavirus to um, boost their immunity and then go deeper into some of what you offer and what you do as well if people need more one-on-one care? Well, as regarding to COVID-19, um, I just quickly want to share something that people can do it easily at home, but I want to address three aspects to, to this. One is uh, increasing your immune system. Um, by the way, acupuncture has been implemented in, in many hospitals in, in China for you know com- combating COVID-19 in conjunction with the Western medicine. And some of the places in remote areas, oriental medicine is the only thing that's available. Only thing that's available. So, um, and it helps with those those, those areas. Um, three aspects that I want to address regarding to that is increase how you can increase your immune system, how you can uh, improve your digestion, and how important it is to manage your inflammation. And it's like how that is all affecting your body. And immune system and digestion is very intricate, intricately connected, especially in oriental medicine. In, in, even in yin and yang organ pairs, there is a lungs and large intestine and spleen and stomach and, and so on. So by improving the digestion, you can, you can also increase your immune system. By immune, increasing your immune system, also your digestion will improve as well. So some of the, some of the specific acupressure points that you can do it at home that I would like to share a little bit. But as far as the immune system goes, um, do everything you can at home with all the information that you have. I really do not believe that we need to be really educated on how we, 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 how we can take care of ourselves. I really believe that, that when this day and age, people know so much about taking you know, self-care. It's more of a discipline that we need more than anything. I really think that we just have to practice what we know. Mm-hmm. And you know the t- you know exercising um, and sleeping well, all of those th- basic things that we already know, but we just want quick fix all the time. We want something quickly done, but we have to do our work. We have to do our part. So as far as the immune systems go, what we can do, taking vitamin C, uh, magnesium, zinc, uh, cranberry, elderberry. Um, uh, turkey tail, um, the reishi, reishi is a mushroom tea. All those things will be very, very helpful in, in helping with your immune system. As far as the digestion goes, that part you already know as well. Uh, I think taking very good probiotics always a good thing, and taking some good digestive enzyme. There's so many good ones out there. Just try different things and what see what works for you. Um, uh, aside from not only for the digestion, but both for immune system and digestion, ginger works the best. One of the best ways you can make make home is the slicing the fresh ginger and dry them and make it into tea. And that will help you with the lungs. But when the ginger dries up, dries, ginger is fresh, it actually works more in the digestion, digestive area function. So when it's dry and um, still fresh, it actually works and goes a different organ and different has a different function in the body. But utilize ginger well. Um, as And the third part of information, why is the information and managing your information is so important is information becomes your energy. Literally, it affects your vibration it literally affects your immune system. Whatever information you take it as a truth, it be- becomes you. It becomes who you are. So, be uh, this is your discernment in taking on what information as a truth. Um, if it creates a high level of a fear, please slow down and look at it. What would you say? Would you like to speak on the Dr. Emoto water experiment for information? As an example, 
Yeah, Dr. Imur, I think the, the movie that what the bleep do we know also uh, address this part on how our thoughts, even just worry self, affect, affecting the molecule of level of water. So, okay, getting the water from same source, one keeps saying, I, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. One saying, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Later on, he crystallized the water to see what's happening. The one's been saying, I hate you, it gets all distorted. Literally become polluted eventually. But once they've been saying, I, I love you, it creates this perfect hexagon and become very clear and pure. And he did, more, he did study further with the words, music, sounds, and, and it's, it's all out there in the internet if you want to research on it. I love the stories that Banya tells because they bring them, they bring it to heart and we're 80% water and how we speak to ourselves, the thoughts that we think really does generate the state of our body. There was one other story you told me one time we were driving around a group uh, of people maybe during a wartime where they were just drinking water. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you mind telling that story? Yeah, I, I don't know the documentary. Um, it's a person in Sedona who made that, who will come to me. Basically, uh, in Japan during World War II time, so a group of uh, politicians and uh, military officers sit around in a round table heading, heading, having a meeting about how we can attack the uh, enemies and they're talk, talking about we should we should have this weapon we should have this kind of uh, artillery and this is how should we attack them and you know basically about how they can kill as much people as possible um, and all of them got sick after the meeting and only thing they drank was water, the water jug in the middle of the table. And they were convinced that they were poison. And they're trying to find out who did it. And also they also analyzed the water. But they found out that there's nothing wrong with the water. <laughs> they gave it to other animals. And so find out it's just it's regular water. Um, what happened is that because of their energy was so heavy and negative, and the only thing they'll talk about how much, how can they can literally kill, uh, you know, people, it really created, it changed the structure of the water and become poison in some level. I mean, they didn't die from it, but they all got sick. I love that story. It's so real. And in native traditions around the world, they pray over the water because water is connected everywhere and it connects us all and, mm -hmm. and it's powerful. And I, I don't think that we take, we, I think we take for granted our lifestyles mm -hmm. and how we manage our input and output. We get stuck in the daily grind. A lot of people just trying to keep their head above water, keep food on the table, be kind to their wife, not yell at their kids, and they have all these stresses. But now things are really changing. People are seeing they don't need the $5 Starbucks coffee every morning. People are seeing ways they can reorient their spending. And people are seeing what's really important. How do I keep value in my life when mm -hmm. everything's changing around, um, yes. around us? And I just think that the information we're choosing to input at this time is really going to impact us stronger than ever because we don't have our usual comforts. We don't have, you know, big gatherings. We don't have things that we're used to. We don't have order within our lives. And I think we're nature and our bodies run off the system of the moon and the sun and we're used to sleeping, waking. I was talking to one older man. He's like, I'm forgetting to shave because I'm out of my routine. And mm -hmm. Now more than ever, when, when we, we don't really have a foundation of normalcy, the information that we're taking in is really going to make or break us, especially if a lot of us don't have a lifestyle or techniques and routines that keep us coming back to a neutral state or a zero point state um, that allow us to stay kind of with perspective and, and calming ourselves. So I'm excited that you're going to teach us these acupressure points, um, for immunity. And, and if there's any for relaxation, um, that people can 
start to, maybe if it's their only new <laughs> habit, if they don't meditate in the morning, if they get on their phone first thing, if they don't walk out in nature, that this can be their little five minute practice yeah. that they can do. And when it comes to discipline, a lot of people are anti-discipline because they think they can't choose whatever they want when they want. But a lot of people who've gained great success see that discipline grants us freedom. And the first thing I do with any of my clients when it comes to creating new habits is habit stacking. So like doing something right after you brush your teeth or making something visible, like putting your running shoes by the door. So, mm -hmm. you know, what Bonnie is about to teach us, even putting acupressure points on your bathroom um, mirror so that you do them, you know, maybe on the toilet, literally. <laughs> I don't know if that would be bad or after they brush their teeth, but really seeing and befriending this discipline of self-care, mm -hmm. I think creates a new safety net of um, dealing with hard times. So I'm, I'm just so excited you're teaching that. I think discipline is so important, but I think it, 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 it correlates to become chore. For most people, I think that's why we're trying to avoid it. I mean, we're naturally built to seek pleasure and avoid pain. I mean, every second of the day, all of us, we do that all the time. We're trying to avoid pain and a discomfort, and we want to we seek pleasure. And and if you can find the way, best way to make that as a, something that's enjoyable to do is just following, listening to your body, just coming back to the body because the body will tell you exactly what we do. And you just mentioned about, um, we just kind of lost and we don't know what to do. And also I mentioned about we lost that, we give our authority, but we feel we keep coming back inside more and more. And there's a natural flow there natural flow of energy that running through the meridian system that's connected to our energy and emotion. If you start listening to that, that you don't really have to follow anything externally. And more you and I think I think this is the reason why the meditation is so important. And it really helps us to quiet down, but helps us more than anything to be able to listen what's inside and you you eventually know that that is the place that everything comes from so anything to help people to get to that point i am there so and not only that this will or this, if you're not interested in anything else if you just work on increasing your immune system try this at home so i will teach you three acupressure points very simple to do um, the first one is here, we call it large, large intestine four. By the way, all this point, uh, meridian runs bilaterally, so you have to do acupressure on both sides. So first one is here, putting your thumb and index finger together. It's the highest point, the puffy area, and press down. And you have to give enough pressure like this, like this one, two, three, four, five, release. Or you can use your thumb, one, two, three, four, five, release. Do that about five times and also do the other side, one, two, three, four, five, release. One, two, three, four, five release okay second point is so for people who are recovering perfectionists like me <laughs> and who are afraid of making mistakes and messing up and so sometimes they never try anything new is it extremely important that we know exactly where the puppy <laughs> part is okay i'm like ah okay by the way when you hit the point if you hit the right acupressure point you know your okay. body will tell you and since um, we are in a kind of changing of the change of the season uh, time, you know, going to spring, and a lot of people have a, a allergy. These points are usually sensitive for most people, and when you get get it, you know that's the point. And we, you, since you're doing acupressure, as long as it's the general area, you should you should do it. Great. So don't be afraid to try. Don't, don't afraid, be afraid to try. And if you want, it's, a, it's called large intestine four, and you can go on, you can Google it to find a picture as well. Okay. This is an important time. Like we have all this information with the internet. It's just all out there. 
Yes, yes. And it can be easier than we make it. I love that point. Okay. Next one is the long seven. When you put your um, hands like this, your in, where the index fingers fall on the wrist, where the bone is, but it falls on palm side. And that's the point. It's right below the bone. We could be like halfway on the bone. It's fine. Yes, that's the point. Very one, two, three, four, five, release. One, two, three, four, five, release. Also, this point is, can be tender, most people. And make sure the other side, like that, where the index finger falls, will feel the bone and fall right below the bone, but to, towards the palm side. So one, two, three, four, five, release. One, two, three, four, five, release. It's easier to do on other people. That's good. So you can yes. do it on your loved ones. Yes. I like that. And the third one is uh, when you bend your arm, put your palm middle of your chest, that, and on your elbow where the, the at, at the end of the crease. So like this right here. One, two, three, four, five, release. One, two, three, four, five, release. Make sure to do on the other side. <laughs> and you can do this. So remember to five, five, five. Five, uh, count and release. Do it five times. And do this five times, about five times a day. So can you walk us through what each one is for again? This one is for? This one is for, um, we call this master point of the head. So anything that's occurring, happening here, it helps take care of this. So not only, also it's even headache. Okay. But, you know, most of uh, um, viruses really enters to, through our orifices, through our nose, out through our breathing, respiratory. Sometimes I heard even through the eye and, and just be able to strengthen in this area. But also this is, uh, helps with the digestion as well. Okay. So it has like multiple functions. When you go see acupuncturists, if you, anybody had acupuncture experience, most of them, practically everybody probably had this point. Okay. The needle. And then um, the next one, this was for? This is a lung point. Lung. Okay. Very important point on the lung meridian. So you're keeping this energy channel open when you are stimulating this, mm -hmm. which a lot of us don't want anything to be building up here right now because of the, the virus, the narrative around the virus being that it affects the upper respiratory system. Yes. Exactly. This one is for? For immune system. Okay. Mm -hmm. But this is also a major point for decreasing the fe fever. If anybody have oh. any kind of fever for whatever reason, this helps. And I remember uh, uh, one of my clients who were working in a, a pediatric, uh, she was a pediatric nurse, mm -hmm. and she was working a uh, uh, night shift. And she said that she couldn't find a doctor and that the baby had a high fever. And um, she just went there to give the acupressure point on that. And the fever started to decrease. Wow. This is a really amazing point. So we call it a nickname is a fever point, but our main, main function is for boosting the immune system. And you can look these up online. Fever yes. point would be the... Uh... Yes. <laughs> would be the trick or the, the way to, to say it. And, um, and I think it, it just shows that our body is the guide and that we can really get to know ourselves and be our own healers, which I think is the goal at the end of the day, as we, we look and syndacy means connection, the name of the brand that I started all around finding the right connection and the right source and flavor of healing for each of us. And I think, I think that 
it will always come back to us. And I love that you're helping us at a time more than ever, where a lot of us are missing a lot of physical touch, especially if we're at home alone, Mm -hmm. you know, to really learn. I think a lot of healing and a lot of soothing comes back to reparenting ourselves, Mm -hmm. how to hold ourselves, how to, to really reconnect hands on to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, I think people are missing that and more now than ever valuing the nervous system to nervous system connection that we don't have and we're doing mostly virtually. And I just, I felt a a tenderness, just, you know, really intentionally touching myself um, and and talking to my body. I don't Mm -hmm. think is something people regularly practice doing unless they've had major injuries or a lot of times I, I don't see people taking deeper approaches to communicate with their, their, their psyche or their body, unless they've been in a lot of pain. So Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sad that so many people are suffering and afraid, but I'm excited that it's a catalyst for a lot of people to learn how to befriend their fear and Mm -hmm. to soothe themselves and to, to really take the time. It's a collective fear. It's a collective pain that, uh, we can all learn to Mm self-soothe. Um, as, as we continue chatting a bit, I'm, I'm wondering how to change people's minds that when it comes to having a lot of anxiety or depression or at this time, um, how to help people engage and manage their fear. And if you'd like to speak to that a bit, because you've been a great teacher for me around fear and love and simplifying um, how overwhelmed we can make ourselves. Mm-hmm. I think the fear, the source for people, for mo- many people, it can be different. Um, uh, some people can be uh, mainly coming from their um, physical condition. And some people can be uh, coming from just based on exposing to certain information that's out there. Um, and some people uh, choose not to accept certain information. and. Um, so as I said before, being selective and being having critical mind and picking the right information as a truth, that's very important because like I say, it becomes part of you as an emotion and also it starts affecting the meridian and energy circulation within, within, within your body. Um, and... In the energy of fear, there's always a sense of um, speediness. Like we want to get to this point and we feel like we're not where it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. I think that the energy behind this is always about that. Like if it's a tiger chasing, chasing you and so on. The truth about any kind of energy that I know is when you speed up, that's when you have to slow down. <laughs> And you can actually go much further when you slow down. And in a situation like this, actually help us to slow down, almost force us to slow down. And it's not a bad thing. And I hope we, we can utilize this time to really slow down and feel ourselves and feel our body, feel what's here. And more whatever energy you have to come go outside of you, trying to bring that inside and trying to listen what's inside of you. Just give yourself just five minutes. Five minutes, if you can be able to achieve state of mind without any thoughts, any information coming to just being still, you will know. But having the five minutes, I know it's not easy. Even for me. We think about what am I going to have for lunch? How am I going to pay my mortgage? All those things are going to come to you. But just letting yourself, allowing yourself to slow down is the key. And this is one of the things that I teach people too. And also one other thing that I teach is meditation. And oftentimes people have never done meditation ask me like it's so hard and how do you do it? Um, First of all, don't, don't think it's hard. Make it as simple as possible. Meditation is, is really about having, building a relationship with you. 
and we know about having relationship with other people and things like that, but we don't think about having relationship with, with ourselves. So you literally, literally making space, making time to sit with yourself, be with yourself. Start with the five minutes and just disconnect with everything that's external, phone, computer, internet, everything. Start with the five minutes. I assure you, anybody who's listening to this, to try this five minutes and that they don't get anything, please let me know. <laughs> I love it. And it's so great because I was hoping you would chat on some of the things that you offer. I will speak on one one memory I have speaking to Banya when I was in a very student teacher mode in, you know, kind of Taoist dojo, coming to different gurus and, and trying to learn the way of how can I find my path forward to peace? <laughs> and Banya looked at me and said, you know, you and I are no different. You might think I'm a teacher. You might think I'm a master, but when you get a little frazzled or overwhelmed, it might take you five minutes, an hour to come back to perspective, to come back to a neutral state. And I've just practiced the tools um, to maybe have it take me five minutes, one minute, one breath to come back to a mind of clarity. Mm -hmm. And so it was always exciting to know that we can train these aspects of ourselves and then it'll take less and less time to kind of come back to a neutral state, a receptive state. Mm -hmm. I think when we are overwhelmed and they can show in the brain circuitry that when someone's in rage or extreme feeling so many feelings of love, they, they don't have the ability to access their cognitive function to make words, to rationally think through something. Mm -hmm. If someone's really angry to ha have a conversation with them is not really the best until they've calmed down and, mm -hmm and kind of come to a place of clarity and a neutral state where they can be receptive and communicate. Mm -hmm. And so during these times when we're stuck in the house together <laughs> or we're not used to being in close quarters with people, finding a way to come back to a neutral state to be able to communicate and really say the things that we wish to say to others that we love. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course to ourselves is, is really important and, and modes of meditation and modes of um, learning how to be who we really want to be, I think is incredibly crucial. And I would love as we come to an end soon for you to speak on, if people go to your website, which we'll have here, what mm -hmm. services you're offering virtually, I might speak to a bit tes testimonial of, of what I've experienced too, working with Banya, but I, um, I know her programs and her offerings and her, um, her practice is always changing. So I'd like you to kind of speak to what you're offering. I know you help people from around the world learn to access and um, kind of process emotions in a really healthy way. And then of course, mm -hmm. heal their physical body as well. Mm -hmm. And the different ways that you do that, as well as if you do any spiritual counseling, if people are looking to investigate what energy is, what spirituality is to them. And I think right now more than ever, people so a lot of people are still working and a lot of people are sitting at home and trying to figure out, I've always wanted to hone in or develop this gift or skill. And I want to buy an online course or I want to, you know, find a mentor or a teacher in this domain. And, um, you would definitely fall in that category. Well, thank you, Jim. Well, as far as what I do, I mean, what, what you mentioned about going, coming back to the body, I really believe more work that I do, more time goes and more I realize how incredibly wise each of us are. And um, more than anything, if people walk out of my place and realize how fascinating they are, I feel like my work is done. And we are fascinating. We, our body is amazing. Our body is a microcosm of the universe. We reflect we are consist of the same uh, percentage of water as the earth. We have, uh, um, you know, number of organs and eyes. And then it, it all related to the universe and earth and the stars and planets and so on. So more we get to understand our, of ourselves, not as the boasting weight and just in a very 
settle and still wait, realize that, wow, wow, I haven't really known who I am fully and completely. So uh, my program's name is ESM, Emotional Self Mastery Program. Um, and, and also, I, I honestly, I don't work with everybody. It has to be, a, it, it has to be somebody that, or as I can be able to give in information to. And also, I'm not for everybody, so I actually give a little bit of interview to see if we uh, right match to work. And also, I do also intuitive work, um, and I also do acupuncture. My acupuncture was spiritual acupuncture, but you have to be here physically. But it's not possible for most people. Um, there's there's a three and the fourth one is over the years what has been developed is a yes and past life regression. Twenty six years ago, my client had a pa spontaneous past life regression on the table while getting acupuncture, and that's how I started to develop this program. So, uh, yes, and past life regression is a combination of acupuncture and um, regression therapy. So, um, if you go to my website, you'll be able to uh, to check out all of those. Do you mind going into a bit about what emotional self mastery means? Emotional self mastery is about um, well, we first we uh, tackle whatever issues that you might have. It could be about relationship. Most of the time, it's a relationship, relationship with, with a, a loved one, coworkers, whatever they might be creating the level of a conflict, or it could be about just with themselves. It could be having some kind of physical issue or emotional issue, and with everything that's happening in your life is actually ultimately letting us to see ourselves, our body and our energy, our soul's way of asking us, us to look at us. Even disease, even simple as the physical disease is, is, is that our body, we are keep leaving home. We're going outside. We're giving authority to outside. And also we keep leaving home. When your mind is outside of you, you give energy to outside. Mm. And, you know, energy, you, you heard about energy follows your mind. Mm -hmm. And if you think about something else, focus on anything outside, you, you lose all your energy. And if you do it long enough, your body starts to scream. And that's what this, this is, is. You become very dis -ease. And your body's way of saying, like, oh, please, please pay attention. And that's what you mean by come home, come home to our only home, this life, which is our body. Right. I would love to speak to a bit because I've met many people around the world who speak about past lives, who've helped people access their past lives. And I didn't believe it in past lives until I met Banya. And it's been a strong part of my own emotional processing journey through past life um, I guess, visioning, whether we'll know it's true or not, dreaming, who knows? To me, it's very different than dreaming, but it's helped me a lot with my clarity. If you, for someone who is just interested in what is past life regression for, what are past lives, how you speak about that to people. I know there's many people I talk to all the time who are always looking into mm -hmm. um, diving into that, mm -hmm. that topic. So I'm going to test it very quickly briefly what well, if the evidence is actually all out there actually there are a lot of actually researches out there believe it or not and even there was tv shows to talk about the little boy remembering exactly where he lived with you you know the life before he even remembers the name his name the town the, the how the house how to get to his house all of that all this information is out there if you want to research and this is incredible about internet all this information is really out there aside from that um my journey really Really started with my client having past life regression while getting acupuncture and that's how I start diving into this and I, I, I study uh, Brian Weiss's uh, method and then eventually Dolores, you know, can, you know, Dolores Cannon and other, um, other uh, style of hypnotherapy and regression. And then eventually I developed ESM which is a combination of acupuncture 
and regression. And if you just quickly ask me what past life is and if past life really exists and 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 what does that all mean? Um, we believe past is past, present, and then future, right? This is a linear time that we, we, we are living in, right? Um, this is really actually a perception illusion. What we know as a time is actually happening right now. And all of you guys have probably have experience of a deja vu. Like you enter into a store the first time in your life, but you feel like you were there. You just had the same conversation you just had a second ago. Or you meet somebody for the first time. You don't know why you just like love that person. Or you just met somebody. You haven't had any word, you could exchange of a word, but you just cannot stand the person. It could be a reason, you know, it can contribute a lot of different reasons. As psychology, the as psychological aspect can explain many different ways as well. But there is a certain part of you that rings a bell into something to kind of relate to. And it goes back to that sense of inner knowing, and which is a work I call it intuition and insight. When you tap into that, you just know. You just know. And a lot of time, um, one of the clients who were coming to me is some of the issues in their suffering, their life that they cannot resolve. Oh, the first client who have spent any uh, past life regression, she came to me with the pain on her shoulder. She did x-ray, MRI, she did all kinds of tests, she did all kinds of therapy, cannot find the reason why she had pain and, and why she's suffering from it. And in the past life, she, find, she saw that uh, her brother um, threw an arrow and, and that's the spot. And that person she, in this lifetime, she had a relationship with and still to that point. And she had a like, love-hate relationship. And, be, and then when she, she saw that, and she got to resolve that. And she, re, she walked out of my office without pain that day. And all these things, actually, I wasn't expecting. I didn't know anything about it at the time. I didn't know what to make, up, make of it. So I had to do my own research. And I, I did my uh, study. And I did my, uh, um, I did find the right people to let me know and teach me and that was more than 25 years ago it's incredible i think so many people have different religious different judgments different perceptions around it all but if they really stay open i mean many traditions the jewish tradition believes in past life and many other you know hindu buddhist um i think you know the many traditions and religions believe in it but the idea of letting us go i think any great discovery lets us go beyond what we knew was possible and that's how we create great discoveries and for me with the past life work that i've done and then has continued with me um it helps me resolve emotional patterns that i'm continuing in this life mm -hmm. and that i no longer have to have to in, endure or kind of partake and even with my mother and my mother is not someone who's really interested in uh past life therapies but a certain session i did then afterward i saw her as a completely different person for the rest of my life that she is my greatest fan she's my greatest um joy she's my greatest friend and i saw her eyes in a and more an indian uh, character and so so was I and we were just the greatest of friends and it it changed my relationship with her forever and it didn't really matter her opinion around past lives her interest in any of it but it was a uh, something that um, I resolved within me and then mm -hmm. changed that relationship and a lot of other emotional patterns it'll sometimes be a story of a different time and a, a different place and it'll will teach me something on a very visceral level and so i'm just so great that you're a pioneer and a guide and a space holder for that subject that hasn't really been discovered much in the west mm -hmm. and u.s soil and um you make it very approachable and, and applicable for people to to really befriend the scary parts of themselves yeah. so 
I'm just so excited that we got on here. We had lots of people watching, like more than 10. Um, and lots more. Let me let me see. Even my but mom. But I want to also address the past life. It's actually evolving to not just past life, oh, yes. but basically touching on a, our subconscious. So it's not only about that. And, and people get to connect with their, their higher self, their guide, other part of them to be able to communicate and receive messages. And I feel like that is more important than anything right now. And yes, you get to see what happened in the past, but it's about you connect really connecting deeper level with your higher self and your guide to communicate and receive messages. And that's another thing that has developed over the years. I think everyone has all of these different innate gifts within mm -hmm. themselves. They see colors, they hear voices, they see visions, they you know have words that come and we never know what our gifts are. And sometimes we need someone to hold space and say, it's okay. I ventured into the unknown, the dark parts of myself too. And there's 7.8 billion people in the world. There's 7.8 billion ways to God to feel connection and I think each of us is such a unique being that deserves to really evolve and bloom into who we're meant to be so that we can share our ripple and it can be really scary. Yes. And, um, and I think a lot of people right now can feel really alone. And so I'm so grateful that you gave people very easy, applicable tips that they can do and they can share with other people and that are free, <laughs> acupressure is free, um, and very affordable. I'd say starting with any vitamin or mineral to start s small doses. Um, I think we're all vitamin D deficient and vitamin C has been seen to help with this. Vitamin C liposomal is easy to metabolize and mm -hmm. receive the nutrients from. It's something I work with a lot. And thank you for joining us, Banya. Let me see if we have any questions. We have a question in Korean, <laughs> so Banya can read that later. Banya yeah. speaks Korean um, and answer that. Banya, if you would like to as well, um, in the comments on Facebook, you can write any um, resources if you wanted to write a documentary or two mm -hmm. or um, any, any comments. People can look at what you write in the post um, under here, and then we'll continue to save those for the later uh editions of this i don't know if there's anything else you'd like to say to people who are sitting at home watching but thank you for your time and stay safe and take care of yourself <laughs> see you guys soon the real fundamental you 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 well if you'd like a place where there's never a dull moment choose the right flavor of wellness for you to see wellness it's hosts of the personal local global wellness show